Writing electron configurations for ions is almost exactly the same as writing those configurations for atoms. There are two types of ions, cations and anions, and we'll look at cations first. When you remove an electron from an atom to make a cation, you're going to take those electrons from the highest n value shell first. And if you have multiple subshells within that shell, you're going to take from the highest L value subshell first. And I'll do a number of examples using scandium and a number of scandium ions. The electron configuration from scandium can be worked out using methods that we've talked about before. When you want to make a scandium 1 plus ion, you remove a single electron, and you do that from the largest n value first. So in this case, the largest n value is n equals 4. Even though the n equals 3 shell has electrons to the right of it, so the 3d1 electron, you take from the highest n value first. And that means the scandium 1 plus ion is going to have the following electron configuration. Then, if you wanted to make a scandium 2 plus ion, you would have had to remove two electrons from scandium, or a single electron from scandium 1 plus. And again, the highest n value is still 4, so you're going to take the electron from the n equals 4 shell. And now, for scandium 2 plus, the n equals 4 shell is entirely empty. And because it's empty, you just don't show it. You don't write a superscript of 0 or anything like that. If you want to remove another electron and make a scandium 3 plus ion, now the largest n value is 3. There's a 3s, 3p, and 3d subshells. So when there are multiple options within an n shell, you look at the largest l value first. In this case, that's an l equals 2, the d subshell. If you wanted to keep on making cations with increasingly large charges, you'd keep on removing electrons in the same way. So the reason we remove the 4s electron before the 3d, even though visually that might seem kind of counterintuitive, is that the energies of these orbitals can be really close together, and the energy ordering can change slightly when certain orbitals are filled and certain nuclear charges are present. Quantifying those changes is complex and it's beyond the scope of this course, but it's important to recognize that the energy level positioning of these orbitals is going to be different when there are electrons present and when they're not present. You'll probably be happy to know that when you're making anions, the change in electron configuration is much simpler. You simply add the extra electron to the next available orbital. And we'll do an example with oxygen and several of its anions. Oxygen's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. And if you want to make it the oxygen minus ion, you simply add an electron. And because that p subshell isn't filled, you can add another electron to that p subshell. If you wanted to make the O2 minus ion, you could add another electron, and there's still room in that p subshell. If you wanted to make an O3 minus ion, you'd have to add another electron, and now there are no more available orbitals in the 2p subshell so you would have to go to the next highest energy orbital, which would be the 3s orbital.